Hello and welcome. This video is going to be a quick status update for Pothos and we will top it off with a teaser screencast. So it's the end of January 2015. We just had a substantial hack fest last week and there's been a ton of great progress. We have a release out, a new users group, new features and documentation, and some news about upcoming videos. So it's been over a year of development and Pothos has become pretty stable. Most of the framework features have been implemented. The API is for the most part not going to have drastic changes and is mostly additive at this point. So it's about time that the project gained a mate branch and a formal release tags. So we have a version 0.1.0 tag and the main branch is now accumulating fixes from that point um, gearing up for a 0.1.1 release. We have a new wiki page called releases to track releases and change logs and the GitHub I.O. has been reorganized to have version do generated Doxygen documentation. Uh, and in addition, we've also tagged the uh, SOAPY SDR project, which is a sister project with the same release version. And, and we'll see in the future that uh, SOAPY SDR and uh, the Pothos SDR toolkit continue to grow together and gain new features. So I've had a lot of requests for some sort of support and discussion group, as well as uh, a way for users to subscribe to announcements about the project. So just this week I've created a Google Groups called Pothos Users. Uh, people can subscribe to this and get emails from me about new, po new videos, new features, uh, new blog postings, as well as have discussions or email the group for th uh, support questions. Uh, and we have new documentation. In my last video I did a demonstration of the remote topology feature and so what we have now is a remote control guide. This is a wiki page that explains more about how to use the proxy server, how the uh, remote topology stuff works, and remote execution. Um, we've got a new wiki page documenting how to use Pothos Util. This is actually a command line app that can do a ton of things like uh, run unit tests, uh, dump verbos about the system, explore the plugin tree, also running the proxy server as well. Um, we have a new page explaining how the scheduler works. This is about scheduler internals, like how we use the actor model, how threading works, how thread groups work, how we get data in between blocks, how we operate on buffer resources and messages and things like that. Uh, and I've also added a section to the coding guide called Advanced Scheduling. This will help you to use Pothos in situations where your work function may have to wait on an external resource or you may have to leave the work function without producing or consuming anything, but you still need to be called again. So we've recently added JSON support to the topology, which allows us to do two things. One, we can describe a topology in JSON markup and actually execute it. Um, so we can use Pothos Util to execute a JSON described topology from the command line. We also have stats reporting as well. So a topology all of its stats, all of the buffer usage and, and uh, time spent in work and things like that can be dumped to a uh, JSON description. And uh, this is going to lead to two things. One, we'll be able to have stats in the GUI. We're going to use this these JSON stats to periodically dump sort of up-to-date up information about uh, buffers and throughput and display it somehow in the GUI. And this will also lead into a follow-up project called Pothos Benchmark where we can automate um, running the topology uh, or running the topology through various scenarios with like different blocks, different uh, ch um, chains of blocks, fan out, fan in, uh, thread configurations and uh, thread yield configurations. So you can really see how um, different configurations and different styles of topologies operate on uh, different architectures. Uh, as a result of the Hackfest, labels are now easier to work with. So we had to address the issue of how to propagate labels through rate changing blocks um, and preserve to which elements the label should apply. Uh, and the specific example is suppose we've put a labeled stream through some sort of upsampler and uh, one of those labels was an end of burst. Now we want to use that end of burst indicator downstream, but how do we know without knowing the upsampling rate to which element that label should apply to. So what we've done is we've added a with field to labels 
which just specifies the number of elements from the starting point. And this is a non-breaking change, by default width is 1, but a rate changing block may expand the width when it does upsampling, and we can easily use this now in a downstream block to determine precisely which element is actually at the end of a burst. Um, and we've also created a convenience function to make it really easy to propagate labels, so you don't have to toy around with m multiplying and dividing um, the widths and indices. There's a simple convenience function. Just give it the ratios, and it makes it really streamlined to write custom propagate label override functions. So we've recently launched the Pothos Zinc Toolkit. Uh, this is a toolkit specifically designed to work with the Xilinx Zinc FPGAs for the purposes of uh, integrating buffers and uh, zero copy resources with the Pothos framework. So with this toolkit we're providing a C driver, and this is this is a standalone user space C driver. Anyone can use it. It's it's independent of Pothos. And on top of that, we've created um, zero copy DMA source and sync blocks that correctly use the buffer integration features in Pothos. So this will be a really nice way to make coprocessors that run in the FPGA that integrate very well with Pothos, avoiding copies and things like that. As a result of the HackFest, we have a bunch of new blocks in Pothos for implementing a digital communications layer using MPSK and working with packets and implementing a MAC protocol layer. Um, most of these blocks are now available in the master, some are still in the works. Ultimately, this is leading up to a complete communications layer demo in Pothos, which will be a later video. For this video, however, we will be ending with a brief demonstration of some of these blocks in action. So, to expand on the Scheduler Explain Wiki page mentioned earlier, there will be a presentation style video, much like this one, going into detail about how we use the actor model, how we use threading, the different types of thread, thread uh, groups and configurations we can work with, some of the, we'll go into detail about how buffering works and how we deal with messages and and stuff of that nature. It's not for everyone, but it's for the subset of people that are really interested in things like this, how you do scheduling, how you effectively work with threads and, and make use of resources. And mentioned previously, we have an upcoming communications layer demo. It's going to be a screencast style video. We're going to show how you can create a complete Mac and Phi layer all within the Pothos GUI environment. And if you made it this far, Here's a quick screencast teaser of some of the new blocks we've been working on these last few weeks. So here we've got a simple digital transmit chain implemented in Pothos using some of the new blocks. Uh, what we've got here is a noise source. He's basically generating random bytes. We're pacing the flow of these bytes. This block is basically slicing up those bytes into symbols which we're going to pass down the chain and encode. So the next block is a symbol mapper and you notice it's taking bytes in and bytes out and the map is 0, 1, 3, 2. That's actually a 2-bit gray encoding. And then we've got a differential encoder block and then our second symbol mapper which is actually mapping the symbols into complex constellation points is this is actually a QPSK and now you can see how we're making use of some of the display widgets and labels. So what we've got here, we've got a drop-down that allows us to select between different constellations. We are passing this into a filter. This is going to be an RRC filter. We're going to use it to do symbol shaping. And this is actually a good demo of also how we use the FIR designer. So right here, we've got a block that takes in a bunch of parameters and outputs taps into the FIR block. And so what we're doing here is actually using the signals and slots mechanism to vary parameters in the fur designer which then is used to apply taps to the filter. So to see this in action we can go over to the display tab, and click run, and we've got a nice constellation appears. And now all those widgets which we saw uh, affecting the FIR designer can now be now appear here and we can actually modify properties so we can expand the gain around and now if I drag things like beta we can see how it changes the filter profile and we can also see how adjusting the number of taps in real time adjusts the quality of the filter. So another cool thing I want to demo is the chat box widget. So this little widget 
simply gives us a chat box and outputs messages, packet-based messages, in and out whenever we type out a message. And so we're actually going to use this later to do a very cool in GUI demonstration of a Mac layer where we can each, you know, each Pothos instance can basically operate as a little chat room talking over an SDR. But let's give this just a quick loopback demo so we can have these two chat chatters talk to each other. So we've got user zero in blue and let's make user one and we'll give him red. And now if I run this, I can go talk to myself. Hello. Oh, hi. It's just great, isn't it? Thanks for watching. If you're interested in getting a copy of this presentation, it will be uploaded in my blog at the following URL.